Hey guys, welcome back to this new video. Today we are going to take a look at the architecture of unit. So uh, in this entire video we are going to cover what exactly is image segmentation and where do we use unit, how do we use it and how is unit different compared to traditional CNNs and what exactly is the architecture of UNN, how exactly is it uh, constructed such that it is so famous and robust we are going to take a look at that and then I'm going to walk you through some basic code and look at the outputs that I've generated from that model so let's get started so let's start with image segmentation so what is image segmentation well it can be classified into four different types but the most basic way is localization localization basically tells you the word localization has the word local in it so local in a sense I'm going to identify the area in my image where I have an object so if it, when it comes to object detection uh, I'm sure you can understand what object detection is so from an image I'm going to detect what are all the objects that I have in the image so if I go one step down from object detection one step back one level down that's basically localization so instead of identifying what the object is I'm going to identify where the object is okay and I'm going to draw a bounding box and that's just localization I'm not going to identify what that object is I'm just going to identify where exactly do I have that object coming to the next thing level 2 that is object detection so from localization I'm going to advance one step and identify what exactly is the object that I have in that local area okay so in the first image that you see localization has given me a bounding box and in the second level which is object detection I've identified the different objects that I have within that area okay so that's level two. Third level is basically semantic segmentation where I'm going to identify the exact area of a particular object if you see here I have sheep so wherever I have sheep object I'm going to trace out and map and identify the exact portion in my entire image wherever I have that object so whatever you see in uh, green over there is grass uh, let me just pull up my pointer yeah there you go okay so whatever you see here in green that's grass and I'm identifying the exact area and I'm not just drawing any kind of bounding box or anything instead I'm identifying the area okay keep that in mind uh, and if I take this one step ahead that's going to be instance segmentation where I'm going to identify the exact region along with that I'm also going to identify and uh, differentiate the different objects that are present in that particular local area okay so if you see the difference between object detection and instance segmentation I'm not just identifying the objects I'm also identifying the exact area occupied by that object in the image as simple as that so where can I use a unit in all these four different uh, models anywhere to be honest so I can use unit for any four of the any one of them among these four but unit is so powerful to a point where you can use it for instant segmentation which is like the most final level and uh, when I have instant segmentation if my model is performing very well on instant segmentation using these predictions I can easily identify and get the previous levels okay so if my model is performing really well and let's say that this is the exact map that I got as output from my model using the maximum point in x value and maximum point in y value I can easily draw an, uh, a bounding box I can easily draw a bounding box so that's basically classification and localization image localization so from level 1 uh, sorry from level 4 I can do level 3 level 2 and level 1 okay now I hope you have a clear understanding of what image segmentation actually is and what are the different types of image segmentations that we have right now so let's look at how traditional CNNs are built so CNN is basically a convolutional neural network wherein it's a neural network that uses convolution okay 
now we have an input image here so this image uh, it's an image of a zebra now i want to build a model that's going to be a classification model so it's going to identify whether the image that i've given as input is a horse or a zebra or a dog so it's going to classify whether this image is a horse or a zebra or a dog okay uh, to do that uh, i'm not going to go through all the very basics of what cnn is how can we build different uh, uh, cnn layers different cnn architectures what exactly does each convolution layer does each max pooling layer does but basically it's going to be a sequential layer a linear relationship is going to be present in sql uh, in sequential model so when i have this as my input image it's going to go through each one of them sequentially one after the other so this image is going to be sent to my convolution layer and uh, if you don't know what convolution layer is please go look it up uh, it's a very very broad field and it's way beyond the scope of this video to explain what cnn does uh, what convolution does but basically i'm going to pass a convolution filter apply that throughout this entire image okay so this is my input image i'm going to pass it through this convolution layer and i'm going to use something called max pooling uh, pooling and the algorithm the technique that i'm using for pooling is called max pooling so once my image passes through the convolution layer it goes through the max pooling layer and convolution again max pooling again convolution again max pooling again and i keep doing uh, i'll repeat this a bunch of times depending upon my use case depending upon the size of my input image complexity of my model and all and once i pass the image through all these convolution layers i'm going to flatten out the output i'm going to send it to my dense layers all these are hidden layers and these are all convolution layers until this flatten layer everything from the flattening point are dense layers so from these dense layers i'm going to get one last output uh, layer is it yeah it is an output layer so from the output layer i'm going to uh, use a softmax function to it's a classification problem so i'm using softmax function if it is a different application you can use a different activation function uh, but since this is a classification problem i'm using a softmax function so for each one of these classes i'm going to get a probability for zebra i got 0.7 as my probability which is the highest so whatever is the high whatever class has the highest probability is my answer so since i got 0.7 as my highest zebra and if i look at the input image it's of a zebra it's correct so this is basically how cnns are usually built sequentially every step is laid down in a sequential layer one after the other and your feature extractions your probability distributions everything is going to happen sequential order this is basic traditional cnn architecture this is the architecture of a unit if you see what the differences are uh, okay so if you see the diagram here whatever we have in blue are all convolution layers and the orange is max pooling and the green is concatenating layers i'll tell you what what concatenating basically is so first of all we have this convolution layer the very big blue block now my input image is going to go into this blue block get convoluted so i'm going to apply a convolution filter i'm going to take a convolution filter apply that on my image and then i'll get one output which will go to the max pooling layer okay and then the max pooling uh, basically reduces the size of my image so from this reduced image i'm going to apply one more convolution filter which is this blue block again and whatever the output that i get from there i'm going to apply one more max pooling layer so the size of my image is going to be reduced further more to this block and i'll keep repeating this process until i reach this point so basically after one certain point i'm going to do something called as up sampling so until now i've been using max pooling layers to reduce the size of my image but from this point on 
from this point on i'm going to increase the size of my image so that's what you call up sampling so from the sample that you have you're going to increase the size of your sample uh, that's called up sampling so here i'm using concatting layer so concatting layer basically takes the output from max pooling layer and the input from this uh, convolution layer and concats them okay so it's going to combine them and that's basically your up sampled image which is going to be passed through one more convolution layer and i'll be sending that to one more concatting layer which is going to combine that with the max pooling layer from the previous step okay so the respective previous max pooling output is going to be combined with your present convolution output they will be combined and will be sent to the next step which is max pooling again okay so if i go here for each epoch my input image is going to pass through this convolution layer max pooling layer the size will be reduced so it will go to next convolution filter again max pooling again size will be reduced convolution max pooling convolution max pooling convolution and at this point i'm going to combine this output with the output of my previous max pooling layer concatenate them and then send it to max pooling convolution concatting max pooling convolution concatting max pooling convolution concatting max pooling and convolution and then i'll get my output at this point okay so uh, from this point all the way until this point whatever you see in red is encoding and the rest of it is decoding so encoding is basically you taking one image and extracting the features while you're reducing the size of the image that's encoding and doing the exact opposite which is using the extracted features and increasing the size of the image is basically decoding so the unit works on encoder decoder principle so i'm going to take an image encode it until this point and then start decoding it and this is the entire architecture of unit my input image is going to be for simplicity sake this is the architecture diagram that i have received from the actual paper that have, that has been published um yeah this is the actual paper you can go through this entire paper but if you see here this is the actual image that they have given us uh from this image you can see that they have used uh input size of 572 by 572 so during the training i think uh, they have used image net data set if i'm not wrong uh for this data set they took image size of 572 by 572 and then uh passed it through convolution layers max pooled it and after max pooling the size of the image has been reduced to 284 and which has been further reduced to 140 68 32 at 32 they have used a concatting layer the one that you see here in white that's a concatting layer so they have concatted the previous max pooling output with the current convolution output and combined them that's basically your concatting layer that's basically up sampling okay they have up sampled it and then decoded it so your size of the uh, the size of your image went from 32 to 52 to 100 196 to 388 by 388 okay at this point you have your output segmented map this is the architecture that they have used you can use this architecture for different kinds of models maybe you can use this for uh, maybe you have a classification problem so you can use this architecture for that problem you might use this for a regression problem but keep in mind unit works the best when you are trying to deal with uh, segmentation mapping if i go to the very first slide unit works really really best when you have a problem with instance segmentation whenever you are dealing with instance segmentation i always suggest you to go with unit because the architecture works really well for only that particular instance it 
does work for classification problems but it's not meant to be used for classification problems because it's much more complicated to be used for classification so the complexity of the model is way too much and classification doesn't need that complicated model so I, my suggestion would be to use this only for instance segmentation or image segmentation sometimes we call it as semantic segmentation as well uh, it's basically the same thing you are just going to identify the area you're going to identify the map okay segmentation map okay so if i go back to these points so we discussed what is image segmentation and how traditional cnns are created and also we had a very uh, high level overview on what is the architecture of unit how it is built and all now let's go through a code walkthrough with a data set so for this particular code i've used hyperquasive data set and these are going to be medical images of digestive tract so keep in mind these might be uh, these images might be a little disturbing for some of my audience so here is my warning if i go to images these are all of my images these are all colonoscopic images captured with the help of a colonoscopic tube inside of the digestive tract here in this region you can see that there is a polyp generated there is like a lump a bacteria generated on the wall of the digestive tract so this is what we are going to identify and predict so in the ppt that i've shown you uh, we are identifying the area where you have sheep which is not that practical uh, in real life scenarios but this is one really extremely practical example of how we can use semantic segmentation so in medical field it's very much useful so if i pass this as my input image for my unit model ideally it should identify this as the region where i have a polyp generated or polyp present okay so how do we train our model with this data there you go this is one more polyp again uh, so this says I think yeah it's the sixth image now let's go and look at the mask of that particular image these are all the masks there you go so this is the area where we have the actual polyp uh if i have to speak a little bit about this data set this white mapping this segmentation mapping has been done by highly professional doctors from a very reputed uh, hospital i'm not aware or sorry i'm unable to recall the name of the hospital right now but uh, you can just basically look up hyper quasir data set hyper space k v a s i r um so the segmentation that we have right here the segmentation mapping we are going to pass this map with this image and my model is going to encode it and decode it and while it is doing all of this it's going to learn how to identify the polyp area okay so this is the data set uh, i'm using 1000 images there you go 1000 images and i've split them into 800 100 and 100 800 for training 100 for testing and 100 for validation data there you go training testing and validation so if i look at the code i'm putting all of my necessary libraries and these are all the paths for my training testing and validation and this is the code that i've used to move my images from the entire core entire data and segregate them into training testing and validation and since i've already done that i'm not going to use this so i've commented it out and this is just basically going to print the number of images that i have in each class so let's run them actually okay that's a little weird
the reason why i'm facing all this address is because i've done the training on a virtual machine instead of doing it locally so right now i'm using a virtual environment here but i highly suggest you to go for an instance virtual machine instance <coughs> if you have a gpu based machine that's really good if not just go for a vm come on i'm just importing the basic libraries numpy tensorflow keras numpy again numpy again numpy again cv2 matplotlib okay so there you go for my training images i've got 800 and the same oh, these are all images and these are all the masks and this is for testing this is validation now it's going to print the same thing i believe there you go okay it's the same thing okay so i'm using uh, python generators so in order to optimize my ram usage to uh, not store all of the images in my ram i'm going to use python generators so it's going to read the image in every epoch okay it's not going to read them all and store them in one um, array or list or anything so it's going to read everything from my local memory one at a time only when necessary uh, then these are my generators so this is the generator for my training training testing and validation and each time i call this generator it's going to give me one image and one mask you can go through the code i'm going to upload this entire uh, notebook and notebook into my uh, github repository and give you the repository link in the description you can check it out by yourself but here comes the star of the show the unit model so instead of taking a uh, model dot sequential I'm going to take directly just keras.layers.input as I've told you unit is not a sequential model unit is a model architecture where you have connections from different uh, parts of your layers different layers okay how do I say that so instead of taking it as a sequential model i'm just taking it as a regular normal input layer and then i'm going to add one more convolution layer uh, if you can see the architecture diagram here they have took they took 572 by 572 as their first layer and 570 by 570 as the second layer with 64 filters and instead of doing that based on the data set that I am using here I took my input shape to be 256 by 256 and the number of filters remain the same though 64 filters 64, 64 filters and 3 channels because it's going to be an RGB image both of these are my convolution layers ok so I have given them as encoding one I'm going to pass this encoding one to my convolution layer and store that as my encoding one. I'll pass this output as the input for my max pooling layer. Whatever output that I get from my max pooling is going to be stored in P1. I'll pass this P1 to the next block. This block. So the output that I get from this part is going to be encoding one that encoding one is going to go into this block okay and this block output is going to go into my max pooling layer and that max pooling layer is going to give me an output of p1 this p1 is going to go into two places one is this red arrow the other is going to be this silver arrow okay so let's see that in the code itself so i'm taking p1 sending it to a convolution layer i'm taking this output sending it to another convolution layer with 128 as my filter size 128 as my filter size 
and the output that I get from this encoding uh, will be given as the input for my P2 max pulley. This is going to be P2. The output from this block is going to be P2, which is going to be sent to two places. One is the silver arrow, second is the red arrow. Red arrow is basically sending it to a conversation layer, the next block, and the silver arrow is going to be concatting layer. Okay. So far, I'm just showing you that P1, P2, P3, so far, so far, so on, are being sent only to the next conversation blocks, but if you see here, the encoding 5 is this part, okay? So this is going to be the end of encoding part. Now I'm going to start decoding it. For decoding, I'm using something called as upsampling, okay? There are other ways to do that. I'm just using the upsample 2D uh, method from Keras. I think it is from TensorFlow. Uh, okay, so there you go. You have your encoding phi and you are doing a dropout of 0 0.1. And from this dropout layer, I'm going to send this dropout layer as my input to the next convolution layer. Upsample it and then apply convolution. And the result is my upsample layer this upsample layer is going to get concatenated with the previous dropout layer one which is this part okay so if you see the white block here that's a combination sorry if you see the blue block here that's a combination of two things the white block which is concatenating layer and the blue block which is the convolution layer here if you see i'm concatenating this layer with the previous convolution layer so what is dropout layer one where do we have that there you go so dropout layer one is basically my encoded convolution layer output okay so i'm concatenating them and then i'm going to pass them through my basic convolution layers and this output will be given as the input to upsample it and then I'm going to pass it through a convolution layer again concatenate it convolution convolution upsample concatenate it again just like what you see in the decoding part okay I'm going to repeat this process and at the output layer I'm going to use a sigmoid function this is going to be the final output of my unit okay so let me build this model compile it <coughs> and i'm going to save this model with dot hdfi extension as polyp underscore unit so when i do a model dot fit my model is going to take the images from my data train itself so as i've told you it, for every epoch it's going to take an image send it through all these layers encode it and then start decoding it and it's going to give an output go through the loss function which is binary cross entropy in this case and optimize the weights and bias and redo the whole training part so this is basic thing but the only difference is the architecture is completely different instead of uh, learning through a sequential manner it's going to learn in a u manner so it's going to take inputs from uh, previous layers that's it that's the only major difference so batch generator is the function that i'm using to generate my uh, features and their labels so my training and x train and y train or even x uh, test and y test i'm going to use the same function for all of them so I'll take my X train and Y train with a batch size of 300 and then I'm going to do a model dot fit on them so once the training is done I'm using 10 epochs okay so after the 10th epoch if I find uh, that my validation score is better than my uh, 
regular accuracy if my validation accuracy is more than my metric which is regular accuracy then in that case i'm going to save my model and continue the trading okay in that way let's say out of these 10 epochs since this is a very big model it's going to take a lot of time for training so in that way out of my 10 epochs if my validation score has improved from epoch 3 to 4 i'm going to save that model keep it locally and let's say if my validation score improved again from 7 to 8 i'm going to override the saved model with the brand new model okay so in that case uh, so what happens is uh, even if i didn't train the model until the 10th epoch i still have something to uh, take a look at how exactly is my model performing from epoch to epoch and this part is just the prediction so i'm loading my model and this is my test data generator object i've written the function above and i'm using matplotlib to plot my predicted map on top of the original image So there you go if i plot original mask on my original image that's going to be my uh, y actual and if i plot my y predicted over my original image that's going to be y predicted so you can basically look at them and compare how exactly is your model performing in terms of uh, segmentation mapping the training time takes uh, somewhere around since I'm not using any transfer learning and I'm training everything from scratch, the training time is going to take really long, but the weights are going to be very accurate. Okay. Uh, I think it took me somewhere around nine hours on a virtual machine, but yeah, please to try it out. If you have a very powerful machine, you can try it out and uh, see if the time is reduced. So here I've got four outputs. I've saved them. Let's take a look at them. So this is the actual image. And if I map the actual map on top of the image, this is the area where I have polyp or virus or fungus. Okay. So this is that area that I have to identify that my model has to identify this area. And I think it did a pretty good job at identifying that particular area. If you see here, Let's look at one more output here. So this is my actual polyp area and this is my predicted polyp area. The same thing goes here as well. And the same thing here. But in this case, uh, the model failed to identify this portion. So again, I, tr I think this model that I've generated here was trained until the 7th or 8th epoch not until 10 so if I trained it until the 10th epoch I might find better results I might uh, see an improvement and my model might actually predict that this is also a polyp area but yeah we still have to do the training and look at the results but so far from what I've seen uh, it did give me pretty accurate results so that's basically it about how unit architecture works I hope you have learn very basics of how to use unit how unit is constructed and where can we use unit so see you again in the next video thank you